Hello, I'm giving you a little bit of information regarding experiment seven that unfortunately we will not get to do in the lab, which is too bad because it's actually a pretty good experiment in terms of showing you different inorganic techniques and uh, all around you get a really nice product. So unfortunately we get to miss that, but I am going to send you a link to a video um, where they did record the synthesis in a couple of different ways. Uh, so if you want you guys to check out that video, because that's going to kind of show you at least the steps you would have been doing for this. <coughs> yeah, but I first of all wanted to talk you through this synthesis, so talk you through the reactions. Since you're not actually there doing it, it's going to be hard to follow. So you'll first see, if you read through, the background information is pretty good, that upfront introduction. Um, and then it gets into the procedure, and there's quite a few different steps in the procedure. Um, if you think about trying to make ferrocene in the first place, obviously you're gonna need a source of iron and you're gonna need your source of CP or cyclopentadiene. Now here in ferrocene, this is a negative ligand, um, but it doesn't come like that. So the way it does come, the cyclopentadiene looks like this and you have two hydrogens here, okay? And then obviously one hydrogen on each of these guys here. So that's cyclopentadiene. But what happens is that at room temperature, this guy dimerizes into dicyclopentadiene. So I'm just going to write it as CP, CP. And what that looks like, I'm going to try and draw this out here for you guys. There's a couple of ways of drawing it out. So it's a Diels Alder reaction. You can go check it out if you remember your organic ends up looking like this. So a little bit more three-dimensional way of drawing it out. I'll try this one. Okay, so you have the two CP rings and they're now attached to each other. So that's dicyclopentadiene. So when you get a bottle of it, most likely you have mostly dicyclopentadiene. So what you have to do is you have to what's called crack it. So you're heating it up. And as you're heating it, it's breaking itself back into CP. And then the CP that you wanna, you wanna capture, you wanna catch it out of the mix. So in order to do that, we do a distillation. So we would heat this guy up. What we're doing was distilling anything that will come out before 44 degrees Celsius. Or this will, this will have a lower boiling point than this one here. So this one's gonna come out below 44. So you can do the distillation and collect everything before then, and then you know you're collecting pure cyclopentadiene. So we do that step, and generally in the lab, we would do, Bob and I would do that before you guys, and it lasts for about two to three hours, and you do have to keep it cold. Now, the next step in here, or the one that you guys will be doing, remember I said this is a negative ligand, so we have to make this negative. We have to deprotonate one of these hydrogens and make this ligand now negative. So that's where your KOH comes into play. You're going to step, you've ground KOH, so I'm on H, OH minus, because you need a base to do this, right? So that comes from the KOH that you grind up in a mortar and pestle. And the solvent you're using here is DME, the 1,2-dimethoxy ethane. So this is good ether-based solvent. So when you do this, for every one KOH you've added, you're going to remove one of the protons. So you can imagine what your uh, byproduct is going to be is obviously water being kicked out and what you end up making is that deprotonated cyclopentadiene which is cyclopentadienal we only have one h there now and that carbon is negative now remember you're going to have also an associated you can't just have a negative floating around by itself or k plus out here so we talked about CP in class and how that negative charge can be localized throughout the entire ring. So what we're actually seeing here is a negative like that. I'll add my K plus onto the side. So here is the ligand now, and we're doing this all in situ. So we have all this happening, we've deprotonated, we've made our cyclopentadienyl, and now we're adding our iron chloride to this species here. It's iron two species because this will be iron two. Iron two chloride is going to get added. Okay. 
This is a tetrahydrate species, so be careful when you do go your, get your molecular weight of this stuff. There are four waters associated with it. Let's write that down up here. So just keep that in mind, okay? We're not using the anhydrous iron chloride in this case here. Uh, now, we are doing this. in DMSO, which is another solvent, dimethoxyethane. You're mixing this stuff into your original mix over here. <coughs> and maybe in there for 45 minutes, I think. And what happens is that you're going to kick out the chlorides and replace them with the cyclopentadienyl. So this is a metathesis reaction. You'll see that in the upcoming notes. So you're gonna end up with our ferrocene compound right there. And if you think about what, I'm not gonna give it to you, but what is the other product coming off of here? If we've switched ligands of iron, then think about what else is being generated. This is not necessarily balanced, so go through and make sure you can balance these equations and you know at least what's happening in each of these steps. Then you have this in there, and then to stop the reaction, what happens is that we take this entire, everything that's going around through here, and mix that in HCl and ice water. So that's doing, that's gonna quench any, that's gonna react with any excess base, and stop the reaction. And we end up seeing this precipitate of ferrocene. It will precipitate out of that reaction. And it's kind of a mustardy, yellowy powder you're going to see that's your crude product now in order to get to the pure product we do a sublimation reaction and don't forget to weigh this though or well <laughs> you're not doing it we weigh this i'm going to give you a mass for your crude product you're going to have to find your percent yield in that case there but then we take the crude product and we do purify it with sublimation so what we do is we take this little petri dish here and you're going to put your powder in the bottom of the petri dish and then we put the cover up on top. You make sure your powder's not touching the sides at all or the top at all either. And then we just heat this up. So I kind of just put this on a hot plate, um, add some heat to that. And what's gonna happen, these guys are gonna sublime and start to collect. And they look like little needles up here on the lid. It's actually, it's pretty nice. And there's still a mustard color. So I will also give you a mass for that one. Now the way the setup looks, also kind of neat. We do that. Maybe I will erase. Ah, I guess we don't need any of this right now. <clears throat> Since you're doing it in a three-neck flask. down the bottom and you do have a stir bar in there as well. And we're gonna, at various times, you have these either open or closed, but you're always going to have nitrogen being funneled through here. It's nice with the stopcock and everything, so we could turn that off if we wanted to. So this is all attached to a vacuum nitrogen line. Over on this side, you can introduce your materials or most of the time they just have that stoppered. Uh, you're doing most of the reaction down here, just adding stuff, always under nitrogen though, so you're gonna have a little cap on there. And then it's gonna come time where we need to add the iron chloride. And what we do in that case there is that we add it with a dropping funnel. Uh, yeah, I'll just go down like this one that. So you're gonna have your iron chloride in here, and that's where you're adding it dropwise. So you would open your stopcock and let this go through for about 45 minutes. And there's this little equilibration arm on there, so it's to equilibrate pressure, otherwise you create a bit of a vacuum up here. So this is closed right there. So that's what the setup looks like. Uh, so if you have any questions about this, please let me know, but I will send you a document. Actually, you can have the document, because that's where you get the link for this. And uh, this should be a formal lab report. You guys know all the portions of the formal lab report. We've looked at this. Um, it should not be long. This is just a couple of reactions, nice synthesis. You can talk about the history or the background of ferrocene. 
why this is an important molecule, why would we be trying to do this synthesis, and give us a good discussion regarding the synthetic procedure and your final compound. So, good luck. <laughs>